Okay, it's time to play some fighting games and answer some questions. Starting today, in the training room, because the first question is about fighting games and would be easier to explain with the demonstration. So the first question is, which character from the fighting games you play was the hardest to learn playing as? And the answer is Android 21, because I had to learn how to engage with mechanics. It was awful. The cool thing about learning fighters compared to most other fighting games is it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing too hard compared to most other fighting games. And here's the big thing, though. Most characters can do a universal combo that works for mostly everybody. So when I started playing the game, I picked Goku Black because he's got nice big normals that are easy to hit. And he's very straightforward. He's got a beam. It's great. And the combo goes like this. And pretty much everyone can do this. It's very easy. The most hard part is at the end when you do the quarter circle to do the circle, to do the super. This is level three. You can do a level one instead if you don't have three bars. And this isn't optimal. It does about half a dude's health. That's not optimal because if we're just talking about Goku Black, a more optimal combo would look something like this. which has the benefit of looking cooler, and then also does almost 2,000 more damage than the basic combo. But, so, if you try and play Android 21 and do the universal combo, hey, it looks like it's going great, and then, oh no, it doesn't work. Because Android's jumping heavy doesn't return the guy to the ground. So... This is why I didn't play Android 21 for a very long time after I started playing the game, because this immediately means her combos are going to be harder, because you can't just slap someone down to the ground. Because that's what a lot of the game comes to, is like, how do you get the guy back down to the ground after you finish the combo? Which is why, instead, for Android 21, you have to do something like this. And even if you don't carry the combo on, it puts them in a better position. Because if you just end it in the air without knocking him back down, he could do whatever the fuck again, right? But at least then you've taken him back to the ground. It's not ideal because it doesn't put him in a sliding knockdown, which is what the ender would do for most people. But you're at least back on the ground. You've got more control over it. And then it's like, all right, well, if I have to learn how to do that as Android 21, I might as well then also learn how to do a slightly more optimal combo, which involves using supers. And then you drop it at the end, but whatever, you get the idea. So, and then it's like, well, this was for the best that I had to learn eventually, because then it's like, hey, we might as well just learn how to do optimal combos for most of the boys we play as instead then nope eh. goku blacks is way fucking slow dude goku black is such a boring character dude he's so nice and straightforward but so boring whatever anyway there's a you, there's an ender to that combo that also works better where you combo the guy and then you do the level three which you know looks great hooray fantastic and then it also does like 8,000-ish damage. Um, I'm still bad at execution, but, you know, I had to learn how to do some execution stuff for Android 21, and that's why she was the hardest character for me to learn how to play as. And now, with that done, we'll go over to the replays, which we have to go back out to the lobby. Oh, God. And then we have to walk all the way. We don't have to walk all the way over. We have to wait for it to load. Oh, God. And then we have to walk all the way over to the little clone man over here. And we can disconnect the controller. Fucking ideal, perfect, fantastic. And we can start a game. So, there you go. It was Android 21. Then, the next question is, you've mentioned that you don't really improve in quick play because people don't play normally. Is this true for open queue also? How does it compare to roll queue for really learning the game and your hero? It's definitely better than um, quick play is it's still not really ideal because people don't like really take open queue as seriously um, as roll queue but uh, there you know 
it's attached to the competitive button in the interface, so people take it more seriously. The problem is you can still just end up with, like, wacky team compositions that, like, you'd never actually see, which means you need to do, like, weird stuff to compensate, but, like, let's be honest, currently, right now, most of the time, you're really just playing with Roadhog Zarya anyway, so you're playing with four DPS in most games regardless right now anyway, so I guess, really... Open queue is practically indistinguishable now. Now that I think about it more, hmm. Yeah, it's better than a uh, quick play, but I mean, simultaneously, better than quick play is not exactly a high bar to pass, really. Um, but yes, it's definitely better, but not ideal. Uh, it's probably somewhere ha like halfway between quick play and roll and roll queue. Um, definitely better if you're just trying to learn how to play someone. Then, next question. Would you ever consider doing shoutcasting for games like League, Overwatch, or fighting games? Probably not for League, because, like, frankly, like, that would be hard. Also, just, like, MOBAs have, like, a lot of dead time going around in there that you'd have to fill space in, and that would be hard. Uh, but I wouldn't really mind doing it for, like, Overwatch or fighting games, you know. Fighting games, like, most commentators for fighting games are, like, really bad, and I feel like I could do better than a lot of them, um, to be honest with you. Because you watch most of them, and they just sort of go like, ow, ow, ow! I remember, like, watching one fighters tournament, and the commentators were just, like, arranging what their lunch plans were gonna be in the middle of, like, the semi-finals, and I was like, ma'am, come on, this isn't really what you're here for, but, you know, whatever, um, so I wouldn't mind doing it, but, uh, you know, we'll see if that ever happens. Next up, expanding on shoutcasting, would you ever consider doing your VOD reviews live with the person who submitted it on, in a stream? Uh, probably not. I've been asked this one a few times before, and the main reason, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, is just that I'm someone that suffers from social anxiety, and I really hate interacting with people that I don't, like, personally know. It's very hard to convince me to meet new people, really. Uh, so... This would be something that would uh, give me far more stress than it would be worth doing. Um, the other thing is that I usually do most of my recording at like four in the morning. Uh, so which usually doesn't line up for most people schedule wise anyway. But uh, no, not really just because Jesus Christ, human beings. Oh my God, I don't like talking to human beings very much. Is all, all of my friends can tell you, like, the three friends I have. It's very hard to get me to interact with anyone that I don't already know. So, probably not. Next up. How do I stop toxic slash tilted teammates? And the answer is, eh, you can't really. It, you just kind of can't be done. Because, um, what are you going to do? You know, like, someone that's toxic... You're not gonna convince them the error of their ways in the middle of a game, and they're not interested in any way, right? Like, you're gonna see this guy for like five minutes. It doesn't matter how fi how beautifully you articulate this fucking speech you've got prepared. This isn't the right format to be convincing somebody that their toxicity isn't is is not the way to be. You know, you're not gonna convince them. You can't stop them. Tilted people, similarly, but then there's the extra additional hassle of they currently are not in an emotional state where they're going to listen anyway. Someone who's toxic is just an asshole and won't listen to you out of spite. Someone who's tilted is also not in the frame of mind to be convinced otherwise, because they're mad, you know, it's kind of the thing with being tilted, you're not really rational at the time. So you, uh, you kind of can't. And toxic people, they just won't. Um, there was someone in the Discord server a while ago that I just banned because I wasn't prepared to even try. But, like, the gist of it went that, like, I should be allowed to just quit out of whatever games because who gives a fuck. 
And I was like, no, you definitely shouldn't do that. And they were like, basically they were like, well, why? Well, because you're being rude to other people. So? And I just banned the guy, because I'm like, all right, you're not going to be convinced otherwise. You're just one of those people, you know? It's not worth, like, getting into this thing where you're going to convince yourself that you're going to convert this toxic person to think the better of their ways, you know? It doesn't work like that. Like when people start interacting with the troll and they're like, there's a game I played a while, not that long ago, where somebody was like, ah, nah, but you should respond to the trolls, you see, because they're ashamed of what they're doing. And it, like, destabilizes them or something. No, it doesn't. They're not ashamed of what they're doing. If they were ashamed of what they were doing, they wouldn't be doing it. So, it's not worth worrying about these things. You can't convince people otherwise. Following up from that, what to do if teammate is throwing? Report them and start playing the next game. This is the thing with video games, but also just sort of life in general, really, is that um, sometimes negative things are going to happen to you, and there's nothing you can do about it except just, like, get the situation over with and then move on after that. This is one of those things, you know, it is possible to make no mistakes and still lose. Sometimes somebody is going to pick Sombra and literally do nothing but throw themselves off the map the entire game. There is nothing you can do. You have lost that game in all likelihood unless somebody on your team is a fucking god. Like if you have a top 500 Widowmaker Smurf on your team, you know, that'll compensate for this dude throwing. But Overwatch is a very team-centric game. It is very hard to solo carry a game of Overwatch. It is extremely easy to solo throw a game of Overwatch. There is nothing you can do. If the person is throwing, you will not convince them to stop throwing. They are here to throw. That is their, their reason for being here. Or they're throwing because they were tilted, in which case see previous answer. But there's nothing you can do. You just have to learn to not let it bother you so much. GG go next, pretty much. Next up, focus on roll queue or try all three. Or, or focus on one roll queue or try all three. Yes, there you go. That's the correct way to read that. I mean, with roll queue, there's no reason really to pick more than one role unless you just personally enjoy playing more than one role, because... You can guarantee with 100% certainty you will play the role you want to play. Not necessarily the hero you want to play, but you will play the role you want to play. So you pretty much just have to want to do it. The guy that posted this was... The basic context for it was like, should I do it now? I, I play support. I'm pretty good at support. I like playing DPS, but I'm bad at it, and I find tanks boring. Should I do the DPS now and probably get placed low, or should I wait until later and maybe get placed higher? It won't work like that, basically. Like, if you're bad at DPS, you need to actually play DPS to improve at it. There are some things that will, of course, carry over from DPS to support, especially specifically if you play heroes like Anna and Zen, then grow over to, like, Soldier Ash. Like, positioning stuff and, like, some ability stuff will carry over, you know, not one-to-one, -one, but, like, there's some crossover there. But, like, if you want to get better at one role, you have to play that role. There's nothing else you can do about it. Um, and, like... This is a thing that people get into their heads with a lot of stuff, where they're like, ah, I shouldn't do it now, I should wait for the perfect time, you know? Ah, I shouldn't write that book I've been thinking about writing. It's not, it's not the right time to do it, you know? It's never going to be the right time to do something. You just, it's like, everything is fucking hard to do, okay? Like, nothing in life is fucking easy. It's never going to be the perfect time to do something. You just have to do it. 
If you want to play DPS, but you're bad at it, don't wait for the perfect time to learn how to play DPS. Just fucking do it, dude. You want to write a book, don't write for the, wait for the perfect time to write that book. Just write the fucking book. Just fucking write it, you pussy. Write the damn book! You want to learn how to draw? It is never going to be the perfect time. Just fucking do it. You just got to force yourself to do things because they're hard. We do them not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Just fucking do it. You want to play DPS? Fucking play DPS. Don't start, don't, stop making excuses and just do it. Um, but if you want to focus on run, roll, or try all three, like, you have to want to try to do all three. There's, logically speaking, no reason to do this if you only like one roll. Just, like, play whatever you want to play. Next up. Should a player be able to solo queue to their desired rank if they should be there, and is it normal to solo queue? I think it's pretty normal to solo queue. Um, I think this guy came... I don't remember if this was a guy or the guy or the comment in the thread, but like the guy, I think it was him, was like, I came from Rainbow Six where you pretty much have to queue with people if you want to climb to any high degree unless you're actually a god. I don't know if that's true or not, but that was context in there. I think for most games, it's pretty normal to solo queue or, at or like duo, maybe. And I, I think that's true for most games. Um, if a game won't let me solo queue, then I am, uh, de-incentivized to play it, personally. Like, Apex Legends is an okay game, like, the gunplay is pretty cool and all, but it forces you to be in a team of three, and I don't like that, so I don't play it, because I don't want to be in this team of three in a battle royale, unless I know the three people I'm playing with. Um, if there was a solos option for Apex Legends, I'd be way more into it. Maybe there is now. I don't know. I can't say I keep up with the game. Um, yeah. So I think solo queuing is pretty normal for most games. Um, generally, people like the ability to be able to play a game by themselves, you know, without needing to bring friends into it. Uh, but yes, so like, pretty, like, particularly for games like first-person shooters, I feel, and, like, MOBAs. Well, MOBAs, you need to, like, specifically go into a different queue if you want to actually queue with, like, a full squad of people. Um, usually. I, I guess I don't know all of the MOBAs. I might be talking about my ass. But League of Legends makes you do that, and that's the only MOBA that matters because it's the most, like, commercially well-known. People also know Dota, but I think... Problem with Dota, right? The pro Here's the... You know, this game about fuck... This video that's ostensibly about Overwatch, where we're playing fighters in the background. Let's now talk about MOBAs. Um, the problem that Dota has, compared to League of Legends, is like, you watch a game of Dota, and it's like, what the fuck is going on, dude? That game is not very readable from an outsider's perspective, you know? Because as someone who doesn't play Dota, I have a very tenuous grasp on most of the mechanics in it. I don't know what the fuck is going on, dude. I don't know. What the fuck is this guy? Oh, here comes a fucking pirate ship from off screen. Who the fuck is responsible for this business? Holy shit, there was tentacles everywhere. Is it the same guy? Those are like aquatic skill. Oh, there's a fucking black hole there. Oh, the whole team is silenced, even if they're on the, like, they're all on different corners of the map, but every, suddenly everybody is silenced. What happened? Oh, here come from a fucking squadron of glowing horses from off screen. Who the fuck's responsible for that? Why is this old man just camping in a bush? Why is he not engaging with anything? You know, oh, he's the horseman, obviously. This one man creates many mans, I should have known. Anyway, Dota is fucking insane to watch, and you don't know what the fuck's going on. And I guess there's some joy to be taken out of that regardless, you know? But like... League of Legends is a much more straightforward, readable game. All the particles are like, if it's an, a, a slightly weird particle effect, they put a circle around it. Like, here's where the effective air is. Just a much more readable game, as far as the visuals go. Um, anyway, so this question, though, was like, uh, is solo, can you solo queue to your rank? Yes, you can. Um, it's... As far as I'm concerned, it's generally easier to solo queue in this game than it is to queue with multiple people. 
And uh, the reason for this is the more people you're queued with, like in a stack, the more the higher the likelihood that you're going to be playing against an equivalent stack or close to. So if you're queuing with five people, you're probably playing against like four to six people queued together on the other team. And at that point, you need to start worrying about things other than your own performance. Because as soon as like a full squad of six people are being like you're playing with a full squad of six and they're playing with a full squad of six, Suddenly, teamwork and communication becomes a lot more important. This is a different skill to what you cultivate in most solo queue games. And is hard to practice. Communication is not an easy thing to learn, really. At least effective communication. Um, so, queuing with like high numbers of people in your group, I think, becomes harder because then you need to worry about the same thing over there, and then you need to worry about these extra things, and like, ah, oh, fuck that. And uh, this is really just me, um, to be honest with you. But um, I also prefer to play solo if I'm playing seriously, because when I'm playing with my friends, even if it's like a competitive game, suddenly I'm just like playing with my friends though, right, is the thing. So I'm more likely to just start goofing around with my friends. I take it a little bit less seriously. I try a little bit less hard because I'm queued with people I know. Uh, so I also prefer to play solo for if I'm, or like with one other person for that reason. Like I'm, I'm trying to climb now. I'm not like just playing to have fun with my friends, you know. That's me specific. That's a me specifically problem, though. Other people may not have this issue, but I find soloing easier for that reason as well. But uh, yeah, I think soloing is solo queuing is pretty normal. And yes, you can absolutely, you should absolutely be able to solo queue to your desired rank if you should be there. So next up, is Lucio still viable? So, in conclu in short, yes, every character is still viable unless you're in like gm maybe you know maybe masters we take it down to that if you're going to be really conservative we'll go to diamond but until you get there you can do whatever the fuck also like if you're really good at lucio he's probably like one of the best supports you could possibly play because like you can carry a game as lucio and he has like utility that is still like really hard to find anywhere else in the cast. Like, Speed Boost is an entirely unique utility that Lucio has, and Speed Boost has been and always will be very strong as a utility. Speed Boost is very good. And then Sound Barrier is also very good, being one of only two defensive ultimates in the game. Makes it very good. So Lucio will remain viable at pretty much all points in time for this reason. Um that he has, like, good utility. But also, like, if you're good at Lucio, you got a good chance of just being able to, like, carry the game, really. Uh, he's probably not as good as, like, Anna for carrying a game, but, like, he's he's up there if you're really good at Lucio. Really good Lucio players are fucking phenomenally obnoxious. Just, like, absolutely tremendously terrible people. Um... So, yes, Lucio is still viable. But, like, also, just don't worry about this so much. There were, like, five questions I saw on the subreddit this week about this. Like, is X still viable? Can you still play Y? Yes, you, you can. Like, fucking do whatever the want you fuck you want, chief. Like, that one guy, this was pre-most recent nerf, but, like, that one guy got to top 500 playing literally nothing but Bridget. It showed, like, his position on the screen, or his position in the top 500, and it usually shows you, like, their top three most played heroes. He only had Bridget in that section. He just had two empty slots. So, like, if you're... And that was pre-most pre recent nerf. I don't know if he's done it since, but... You know. If he could get to top 500 just playing Bridget before this patch, like, still only one patch back... You can do whatever the fuck if you're good at that hero, dude. Like, if you're good at hero, you can climb as hero. 
that that is life you if you are good at hero you climb as hero uh, if we talk about League of Legends again uh, there have been a great many people who have gotten up to the highest ranks playing only the one hero in um, it's less relevant now because since they put the role queue in but I remember back before they had a role queue there were a bunch of people that were just playing the heroes in whatever position they happen to get in that game. There are five positions, and most characters in League of Legends are only really good at one position. Some of them are good at two positions. Extremely rarely, they're good at three positions, right? And before that, before they put the role queue in, which was terrible, by the way, absolutely awful, but before then, you would just queue into the lobby with five people, and you would uh, call what position you wanted in the chat, but there was nothing to say you were going to get that. You were just trusting that four other people were going to go along with you. Because if you wanted to play, like, mid lane, one of the most popular roles in the game, if you wanted to play mid lane, but you happened to pick last, all four people that picked before you had to just agree to let you go there. So... There were people who played, like, just one character, and they would play him or her regardless of the role they got in the game. Bearing in mind, most people are only good at one role. So, like, I'm playing, like, Mordekaiser as a support. Oh, no, this is terrible, absolutely awful, oh, God. But they get all the way up to the highest rank just playing this one guy. People, if you really want to play a character... It doesn't matter how viable that character is. It doesn't matter what the current metagame is. All of this is irrelevant. The only thing that actually matters, when you get down to it, the only thing that matters is if you are good at the hero and if you are good at the game. That's it. Your personal skill is the only thing that actually matters. Now... You might make it harder for yourself, you know? I make it harder for myself in, like, every single game I play as because I don't really like to play the most popular heroes. Which is why, um, I'm gonna be really sad if when Roshi gets added to Fighters this, uh, month. I'm gonna be really fucking sad if he ends up being the best character in the game because then I'm not gonna wanna play Roshi even though I've been waiting for Roshi since the game came out. I'm already probably, I'm going to stop playing Ultra Instinct Goku because he's like the most popular character in the game by far because he's really good. You know, and he's Goku, obviously, right? Which sucks because I like his play style, but I don't like playing the most popular characters. Android 21, I have played for an extraordinarily long time now. She's the most ca played character I have by far. She is literally just a worse version of like three other characters in this game. Kid Buu is basically Android 21, but better in, like, pretty much every way. It's just how these things are. Um, so I'm gonna play, like, Gogeta again instead of Ultra Instinct Goku, probably. And, like, he's just not very good compared to a lot of other people. But I like him, goddammit, and that's all that fucking matters. It doesn't matter. Meta doesn't matter viability of the character doesn't matter all that matters is your personal skill don't sit around wondering if x is viable if y is viable play whoever the fuck you want to play in every game that you play just play whoever the fuck you want to play remember also it's a fucking video game dude we're meant to be here to have fun now I personally am the sort of person that likes to torture myself in every single game I play. I play a game like Devil May Cry and I'm like, I gotta get the S rank in every single stage, which is uh, varies from being merely difficult to being fucking ridiculous, depending. But, you know, I gotta do it. It's who I am. I gotta not play the most popular characters because they're popular. I've gotta be the contrarian, you know? You just play who you like. All games. Video games are meant to be fun. Stop taking it like another job, you know? Okay, so next up, and this is the last question for this game. What are Hanzo's weaknesses? To be honest with you, Hanzo's only real weakness is the character play- or is the person playing Hanzo. Like... 
The characters that like most counter Hanzo are like divers and flankers. But if you're good at Hanzo, they won't actually kill you. Because most people are going to be like, all right, I'm going to counter Hanzo, I'm going to pick Winston, you know? If the Hanzo's good, Winston's actually probably going to be the one that dies, rather than the Hanzo. Similarly, like, if the Genji is- if the Hanzo is better than the Genji, the Hanzo's probably going to kill the Genji. Like, Hanzo's actually, like, if you're good at Hanzo, Hanzo's actually really good. Um, some people will also argue that, like, Widowmaker um, beats Hanzo. I- I disagree with this assessment. I feel like nine times out of ten when I see a Hanzo fight a Widowmaker, unless the Widowmaker is literally a god, like actually a divine being blessed by Jeff himself, or po possibly even Jeff himself, the Hanzo wins. Like, the thing is, right, that like if you look at it strictly speaking, hit scan hit man faster than projectile. Therefore, Widowmaker beat Hanzo because Widowmaker hit scan Hanzo not, and Widow click head Hanzo dead. The problem with that is that, like, Hanzo has more utility, which means he requires less straight up skill in this regard, right? Because Widow is literally, you gotta click on Hanzo's head better than he can click on you. But Hanzo has easier access to his version of Infrasight. And he's got more varied movement that he can do on demand. And he also doesn't have to expose himself as much as Widow does, right? Because Hanzo can just aim roughly in the direction that Widow's in. Peek the corner over and over again, right? Like just peek out, shoot the arrow, peek back again, and just repeat over and over and over again. And he can vary his movement around the corner while he's doing this because he can wall climb and he can lunge. Whereas Widow can basically only walk out. Um, so, like, Hanzo has more things going for him in this, other, except for the fact that the projectile takes longer to get there than a hit scan gun. That's the only thing Widow really has over him. So, like, I argue that Hanzo beats Widow. And this, I feel like, is what I see as the outcome most of the time. So, but, yeah, anyway, uh, Hanzo is actually, like, Pretty good, as long as you're really good at Hanzo. The thing is, there's just like a really big skill disparity between a really good Hanzo and a really bad Hanzo, right? Like, if you're a really bad Hanzo, you're actually like just Burrowing or a Dragon Strike bot, and that's it, right? Um, but if you're a really good Hanzo, it's like if you're a really good Widow, really. You'll hard carry the game, no problem. So, what Hanzo's weakness is the person playing Hanzo. Really, because like as far as it goes, like he doesn't have that many like strict counters, really. Unless you want to just say divers, in which case, yeah. But a good Hanzo will still beat them pretty easily, honestly. Or he can just get lucky, because as we know, arrows are very skillful when you can just aim the general direction of the enemy team. You know. I know I can play Hanzo and get a fair few kills by just randomly kicking in the general vicinity of where their heads will be. And just throwing a lot of arrows that way. Spam is a very fun mechanic in Overwatch. So, yeah. Um, his biggest weakness? Pretty much him. Or the person playing him. There you go. That was the last question, so now I gotta wait for this game to end. Which is a game that we've shown before. I just haven't played the game in a couple of weeks at this point. Mo partly because I've been busy. And partly because I'm just waiting for Roshi to come out. You know, I'm just, I want to play as my beautiful little turtle boy, really. That's what I'm really about right now, you know? You know? Um, I also similarly haven't really played uh, Grand Blue. Um, partly because you really have to play that game at like prime hours to get really many games going, on PC at least. And I'm also kind of just waiting for Belial to come out, because I've said this before, but like... None of the characters in Grand Blue really speak to me the same way that, like, the characters in, like, Fighters do. Uh, the mo- the one that does the most is, like, Sorez, but, like, he doesn't call to me enough to justify me, like, suffering through playing the guy, you know? 
Uh, Belial looks pretty cool. Now, now that we've seen some gameplay, I don't really care about Belial as a character, but gameplay-wise, he looks really cool. He reminds me a lot of, um... Hazuma from, uh... Blaze Bloom, which is another Arc System Works game, so, you know, not too surprising there's some overlap between them. He just has that general vibe, just some, like, pretty weird looking... like, some pretty weird abilities. A general, complete contempt and, like, mockering, mocking of the other person. Like, complete lack of respect for the person he's playing against, pretty much. Which is a characteristic I'm always drawn to, really. Why do I like Gogeta so much? Because he's a cocky asshole, right? But he's all, like... You can't just be a cocky asshole, right? You have to be able to, like, back it up. Gogeta's a cocky asshole, and is also the fusion of Goku and Vegeta, so he's, like, the also the most powerful person in existence, you know? Uh, but he's also just, like, yeah, Vegeta, same way I, yeah, I don't even need to use my fucking hands, man, I'm just gonna fucking kill you, who fucking cares, right? Um, I'm, I'm always drawn to that kind of character, and Belial, uh, is, like, the same way, where he's, like, yeah, whatever, ah, fuck that guy, fucking nerd, <laughs> Fucking loser, what's he gonna do to me? I'm fucking Belial. He's not Belial. What's he gonna do? I like that sort of character, generally speaking. Um, everybody's really thirsty for him, and they've all been tricked into thinking a twink is hot, though. Just for the record. So anyway, thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask more than happy to answer. If you have a question you would like answered on the show, post a comment, send an email, use some smoke signals, whatever you want, really. Telepathy, anything. Our social on Twitch, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, 8 p.m. EST, it's 11 EST, there's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.